Hi everybody, this is the homework help video for Module 1, Lesson 3. Um, in this lesson we learned about exponents and powers of 10 for the first time. So, it's a little bit tricky, but once you get your head around it, it shouldn't be too bad. So, just to briefly review the lesson, um, what we've been learning about is that if, if we multiply by 10, any number, um, the value of the digits uh, all increase, they all become 10 times as large. Um, so, 10 times 5 becomes 50, and 100 times 5 equals 500. And these are pretty simple examples, but we've also been doing it with numbers like this. We've been saying numbers like 2.4 times 100 equals 240. And why that is, is that because is if we imagine our place value chart, uh, multiplying by 100, um, multiplying by 100 is actually the same as multiplying by 10 times, times 10 times 10, because 100 is 10 times 10. And every time we multiply by 10, we shift one spot on the place value chart. So multiplying by 100, it, it shifts two places. So like so. Um, the decimal point stays in the same place, so 2, 4, so it becomes 240. If you don't remember why the 0 goes in there, go back and take a look at the last um, homework help video, and that covers that. And, and then what we did in this lesson is we took those numbers, like 10, 100, 1,000, and we found a way to rename them. And what we did is we said 10 times 10 equals 100 and because 100 is 10 times 10 um, we can also rename it like this I'm going to put it on this side 10 to the power of 2 or 10 to the second power and what that means is that we are multiplying 10 by itself two times. There's two tens that we are multiplying together. By the same token, 10 to the power of 3, or 10 to the third power, is 10 times 10 times 10, which equals 1,000. And we broke down all of the examples of that all the way up to 10 to the sixth power, which is about as large as we'll use in fifth grade, which is 10 times 10, times 10, times 10, times 10, times 10. Let me double check. Let's see. Um, 10 to the 6th power means I should have 6 10s that are being multiplied together here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I am correct. Um, in 10 to the 6th power, when we do all that multiplication, um, you can think of it as shifting a place value each time or adding a zero each time. It turns out to be one million. Some people noticed that there are six zeros in one million, and we multiplied ten to the sixth power. Um, see if you can figure out why that is. So the bottom line to remember here is that we aren't doing anything different in today's homework than we have been over the last couple days, um, the, main di the only thing that's changed is that instead of writing numbers like 1 million all the time, we might use 10 to the 6th power. Um, and we're going to do some shifting back and forth between those things. So let's take a look at a few homework problems. The assigned homework was 1, 2, and 4. I'm not going to go over 4 here at all. Uh, I want you to think about that on your own. Uh, but I am going to solve a couple of problems directly from 1 and 2. Um, so you can follow along. I'm not going to do all of them, um, but I'll do some that I think are helpful examples. All right, let's look at problem one. The first thing I want you to notice is that one says to write the following in exponential form. Kind of crossed it out. I meant to underline it. And here's the example. E.g. means it's an example. 100 equals 10 to the second power. So let's take a look at 1a. 1a 
says 1000 equals blank. And what it's looking for is something with an exponent. Um, I'm going to do this the long way. If you see right away how to do this, that's okay to go ahead without me. But I know that 1000 is 100 times 10. So I, can, I know I can turn that into 10 times 10 because that's 100 times 10. Do you notice how this 100 becomes 10 times 10? Now I see three tens being multiplied together, so that is 10 to the third power. So that's my answer, um, is 10 to the third power. Uh, let's do another one. Let's look at 1b. I'm not actually going to solve this one all the way through, but I'm going to point out what I think some people might put down as a mistake. So 10 times 10, well, that equals 100, and I think some people will just write down 100 and leave it at that. But remember, up at the top, it tells us we want it in exponential form. So what that means is that it's 10 to the power of something. I'm not going to tell you what it is. I want you to see if you can figure it out based on everything we've talked about. Um, but remember, we need the exponent. Now, let's look at D. D is telling us that it's 100 times 10. Just like in the last one I pointed out, this is a two-step problem. I'm going to solve this one all the way through. Um, if you solved B, maybe you'll be able to do this one right away. And if not, this will give you clues for B. So 100 times 10, I know that that is 1,000. Because it's shifting up one place on the place value chart. And now I know that I have to um, make this into an exponential form. Wait a minute, I just saw a shortcut. Look at this. What if I broke this into 10 times 10? Now I can't forget about this one. So it's 10 times 10 times 10. I see three tens, so that is 10 to the third power. I guess I picked two examples with the same answer, but that's okay. Let's do one more example from this set. Let's take a look, take a look at C. C uh, is 100,000. So how many times would I have to multiply 10 together to reach 100,000? That feels overwhelming, except that I do know there is this sort of shortcut way to think about it. If I start with 10, each time I add a 10, it's going to mean one shift on the place value chart. So how many shifts would it take me to get to 100,000? I'm going to underline the 10 there, and then we would have one shift, two shift, three shift, four shifts. So and we're going to go back and double check this, but that would suggest that I have to multiply that four more times by ten. Now let's do, so that I have five tens being multiplied together here in all. Um, that you might reason through this in a different way than that, but that was just my thinking. But let's double check because I'm not totally sure that that math thinking works, and we should always think it through from another angle if we can. So now that I've written this, this is my kind of hypothesis, my theory for how this might work. Um, I have 10 times 10, which is 100. 100 times 10 is 1,000. 1,000 times 10 is 10,000. 10,000 times 10 is 100,000, and that's correct. I could have just also just done it that way. I could have written down 10 times 10, and no, that's 100. 100 times 10, that's 1,000, and so on. Um, there's different ways you can approach thinking this through. Now, this next step is to write it in exponential form. So that's 10 to the, how many am I multiplying together? 5, so 10 to the 5th power. And that's my answer for that one. Problem 2 says write the following in standard form. Um, this is where people start to get, feel a little confused. Um, this is going to kind of be two steps until we get our hands around it a little firmer, so our, or our brains around it, maybe that's the way to say it. 
So 4 times 10 to the third power. The first thing you should do is think to yourself, what does 10 to the third power mean? Let's zoom in on that a little bit. So 10 to the third power, that means 10 times 10 times 10, right? So, and don't forget that we're multiplying all of that times 4. There's different ways you could solve this. Um, I think the way that makes the most sense to me is to think about the meaning of 10 to the third power first. So I'm going to, whoops, uh, to symbolize that, I'm going to put those times 10s in parentheses, and I'm going to solve them first. 10 times 10 is 100. 100 times 10 is 1,000. So I have 4 times 1,000, which is 4,000. Let's do C, 5,300 divided by 10 to the second power. Well, same way I was thinking above. I'm going to go a little faster now with the power. I know 10 to the second power means 10 times 10, which is the same as 100. So really what I'm asking here is 5,300 divided by 100. Now, when I think about my place value chart, and you might even take a piece of scrap paper or whatever, and even just draw it really small on the margin, you might actually want to draw a little mini place value chart. And if I have, I'm going to put the decimal point there, 0, 0, 3, so I haven't labeled them. I, I, what I've just done is I've said, basically, here's the decimal point, so I know this is ones, tens, hundreds, thousands. And if I'm dividing by 100, uh, that means we're going to be shifting down. So oops, let me make that a little smaller. And, okay, give myself some spaces. Now, I'm going to shift, now be careful, this, this middle place is not actually a place. Um, it's, it's not, that's, I'm just, that's where I'm putting the decimal point. Uh, the decimal point gets its own kind of space there. Um, so I'm shifting two places for each one. So all the way over to here, then zero, three, remember I, I'm, the decimal point is just for the decimal point. So I end up with five tens, three ones, and zero tenths and zero hundredths. Um, so I could write that one of two ways. I could write it as 53.00. That is absolutely correct. And it actually shows that you understand where those other digits went. It's also mathematically correct to simply write 53. Uh, because it's 53 and zero tenths and zero hundredths. It's exactly the same as 53. I'm going to do one more. I'm going to do E. Uh, this is one with decimal numbers and multiplication. Um, so what I'm going to do is this one I'm going to go directly to my little place value chart. I'm going to write this out like this. And I'm going to build a little place value chart around it. Oop, that's a little too messy. I should close the top of that zero. Now, I'm not sure I've left myself enough space. Um, do you have enough space is always kind of a good question to be asking yourself when you're solving a math problem. It, you want to set yourself up right away to succeed, and leaving enough space for the problem is going to really help with that. All right, so the first thing we need to figure out is what are we multiplying by? 10 to the third power. Hopefully by now you recognize this one, um, but if not, it's give me 10 times 10 times 10, so 10 times 10 is 100, and the third one, the third times 10, it brings it to 1,000. So we're up to 6.02 times 1,000. Uh, multiplying by 1,000 means we're going to shift three spots on the place value chart. Uh, multiplication means we're going to be moving, the, it's going to be 1,000 times larger. Um, not not one thousandth the size. So it's a thousand times larger, not smaller. So that means each number is going to shift three spots on the chart. One, two, three. So six, 
zero seven two point. Well, now what? We have no more numbers, so it's just point zero, right? There's there's nothing more to bring over. Um, so we can even just drop that off at the end, and we have six thousand seven. 6,072. Zero, there are zero hundreds and there's zero in the tenths place, so I'll just simply write it like that. Hopefully that gives you enough information about how this works um, to solve the rest of them independently. Um, I'm noticing when I look ahead that I've got some that are times four, so if times, or times ten to the fourth power, rather, um, and if um, 10 to the third power is 1,000, I bet you can figure out what 10 to the fourth power is, because that's 1 more times 10. And I want you to notice that we've got some division problems in here. Um, be careful with those. Make sure that, that say, for example, in D, this one down here, um, we have 5,300,000 divided by 10 to the third power. So that's going to be getting smaller. 10 to the third power is 1,000, so that one's going to be 1 1,000th one of the size. Um, always be just thinking about what do these numbers mean. We haven't really changed anything by adding exponents. Exponents are just a short way of you know, writing this kind of stuff, that instead of writing 10 times 10 times 10, we just write 10 to the third power. And what you'll see over the next couple of days is that we're just going to start using those numbers with the exponents more directly um, and not breaking them down quite as much. Um, but for now, um, use whatever strategies are working for you. Um, draw place value charts if that's helpful. Um, you, you may do mental math, but I want you to really go slow and think these through. I, I hope this helped. Feel free to send me any questions. Bye.